Hello everybody, this is Nagraj. In this session, we will learn about how to do sentiment analysis using neural networks. What is sentiment analysis? Given text paragraph of customer reviews or feedback, machine learning program should find if customer sentiment is positive or negative. I have made a simple animation for you to understand two different types of sentiment analysis. First, tokenize, that is convert sentences into tokens of words, remove the punctuation marks and convert to lowercase. Second, build the vocabulary of words from the training corpus, create the mapping of words to index and index to words. And the third step is convert the words to embedding vectors using pre-trained word vectors like glow. And the fourth step is average the embedding vectors across each words. And the output will be a vector of size embedding size. Pass this output through a linear layer to get only one single output. And if this single output is greater than 0.5, the customer sentiment is positive. If it is less than 0.5, the sentiment is negative. This is only forward pass. You will have to train this on labeled sentiment data to make it work. Now, let us look at more advanced sentiment analysis with convolution. The first three steps are same as before. Start with 2 gram convolution over the embedding vectors of every word in the paragraph. So the filter size is 2 cross embedding size. And max pool the outputs. You will get one number for every filter. For 4 filters, you will get 4 numbers. So, Similarly, you need to do 3 gram convolution over the embedding vectors. The filter size is 3 cross embedding size and max pool the outputs will get 4 numbers for 4 filters. Similarly, do the 4 gram convolution and you will get 1 number for every filter and for 4 filter you will get 4 numbers. Now, now pass the concatenated output of the convolutions through the linear layer and you will get only one single output and that is the sentiment. If the output is greater than 0.5, sentiment is positive and if the output is less than 0.5, the sentiment is negative. Of course, for you to make this work, you will need to train this network over a training data. This is the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, I would like to take you through first two or three steps at least. Just go to Google and type Toss Text Datasets and search. And go to the first link that you get. Okay, so this is a website for Toss Text and it has many different datasets so for sentiment analysis, question classification language modeling, machine translation and many things. Also, there is a lot of code that you can experiment with. Okay, so I would like you to just copy this dataset, IMDB dataset for sentiment analysis. For that, you need to copy this code. Okay. I have copied the same field here onto my Jupyter notebook. Okay, and I have made small changes. For example, vectors equals to glow, I have put the glow file itself, which I have downloaded from the internet. And the second thing is, here the device is zero. Okay, so I actually made the device equals to tosh.devicecuda, because otherwise you will get a warning. Okay, so let's execute this. The first step is uh, create text and label. These two fields define how the text should be and how the label should be. Uh, so the text field here is saying that, uh, the field should be converted to lower case, lower equals to true and our data set will include the lengths of sentences and we want a batch to be first, okay. And the label is saying that we don't want the label to be sequential, okay. We'll see what this is later. One more thing I can add here is, which I already know, is I can make uh, the tokenized field also because we want to talk, use a particular tokenizer so I will make the tokenizer here as spacey tokenizer because I want that. 
okay so with this i will call and it's very interesting what's going to happen so it ran successfully without errors let me see what's going to happen to text and label i'll have to do var text and it will show me what is there in text it is showing all the properties that text has like sequential equals to true use vocab equals to true and it has uh, the values of tokens unc token is unc fixed length is none and different uh, types of uh, properties you don't need to worry you need to worry only the properties that you have passed for example spacey tokenizer is enabled okay and it's english uh, similarly let's look at label quickly the label that we created here let's do wars of that wars label okay so this also saves uh, the properties of the label so we haven't set much here except sequential equals to false everything else is default which is already there with pytorch okay so now let's go to the next step which is uh, download a data set so i will make the caption here download the data set quickly download the data set Uh, set the mark down. Okay, so this is what we are going to download the data set. Run this. And this should be marked down. Hash, hash. Define the text and label fields. Okay, so our downloading the data set is running because i see that the wait sign is uh, showing it will take some time like one or two minutes before you actually get the data downloaded while this download is happening let me quickly show you other things uh, in fact you can actually get the imdb data set other way go to google and type imdb data set go to the kaggle link and you will uh, see what this data set is about it has uh, 50k movie reviews it has 50k movie reviews and uh, you can see uh, the reviews here and it says whether it's positive or negative it's labeled as positive review or negative review okay and in fact instead of do directly downloading from pytorch you can download the csv file and read it from there even that will work okay so let's go back we are still taking more time to download let's wait okay after one or two minutes is downloaded and let's quickly check how they look uh, train z train zero dot text and uh, i should see the text okay this is the first review and the label is very simple train zero dot label okay so this says the positive sentiment okay similarly you can do train one or let's say train five the text the label is this okay so this is working so we have train and uh, test data set what's the length of train length of train is, should be 25k and the length of test should be 25k so this is already defined by pytorch but we can uh, define uh, what the split between test and train also so next step is build the vocabulary okay so for that we need to use the same same text and label fields that we define and call build vocab so i'm calling text dot build vocab and i'm taking the train data which is created here of 25,000 and note that I'm not taking test because that's how they uh, how it will be in the real world I don't need to worry about the test uh, so also I am initializing with the vectors that I already have I downloaded the glow vector of 100 dimensions and I am passing that here run it and this is also going to take some time it is done 
my text vocabulary is built uh, let me check it var uh, text vocab this is how you check it okay so it shows me the entire uh, vocabulary variables it has frequency of each words it has also yes to i and i to s which is string to integer and integer to string so i want to show you show you that so here i see it has i to s which is integer to string and it also has string to integer it also has string to integer okay so let's use those and see how it works text dot vocab dot s to i so i want string to integer let's say uh, english or cat it has an integer and let's say i want to get what are the words between integer I want to get the words between integer 25 to 40 there should be 15 words right so each integer has been assigned to a word okay and you see all of them are tokenized so this is one thing other thing is in fact you can actually see the you can also see the frequency of the words okay so with this let's go to the vectors in fact you can see the vectors as well so in the end you can actually see the vectors for that you need to do text dot vocab dot vector uh, let me do two and you see the word and size of that vector should be 100 100 okay so next uh, we are going to create the downloader or iterators create a downloader data loader we are going to create data loader iterator i like this so run it and run this okay with one shot we have the data loaders uh, created we can quickly check and the batch size given is three okay this is important so how do i access train iterator if i want train iterator i need to do uh, batch equals to next of iter of train iter that is done so i should be able to get batch the text and batch dot label so i have three sentences and they are of course they have been converted to uh, the integers right integers of words and we have corresponding labels okay so we can also find out what is the dimensions of those uh, uh, sentences batch dot text zero should give me uh, some vector and if I see the shape of this it is 3 cross 461 that means there are 3 uh, sentences of max length 461 in fact the sentence length is what? in fact the sentence length are given here 365, 154, 461 okay wonderful so we know how to uh, so in this video we learnt how to define the text right so in this video we learned how to define the text and label fields in pytorch right next is we downloaded the data set which is imdb data slide in this video we learned how to define the text and label fields in pytorch second in this video we learned how to define the text and label fields in pytorch and the second thing we learnt is how to download the data set. In this particular case, we downloaded IMDB data set. Okay. And we also examined how the data set looks like, the text and the label. Then we learned how to build a vocabulary with a pre-trained vector. So we took the pre-trained vector 
glow and we build the vocabulary for text and then we build the vocabulary for label okay and then we looked at how the vocabulary will look like so it uh, has uh, all the fields like uh, it has a uh, string to index x and uh, index to string we checked both of that we also checked that vocab has been initialized with vector then the last step we learned how to create the data loader iterator because this is what we'll be using for our machine learning model don't worry about the small details as i'm going to share this code with you and in the next video i'm going to show you many more interesting things Thank you for watching this video and please make sure to like this video if you like it. Thank you again.